Hello researchers, how are you? I hope you are fine and doing well. In this video, I am going to demonstrate you how to configure Raspberry Pi without connecting keyboard, mouse and even display. Now if I talk of my previous videos, I have already made you learn how to configure various operating systems on Raspberry Pi like Raspbian VZ, Raspbian Jazzy, Kali Linux, Windows IoT, Open Alec, OSMC and many many more. But what we have done in those videos, we have made two parts in which in the first part, I have made you learn how to download that image, how to format the SD card using SD formatter and how to use Windows 32 Disk Manager software in order to install the image on the SD card. And in the part B, we have connected that SD card to the Raspberry Pi and we have connected that Raspberry Pi with keyboard, mouse and display and we have got the graphical interface. But if we don't have keyboard, we don't have mouse, we don't have the display, how to configure the Raspberry Pi? In this video, I'm going to discuss that. The softwares will be the same, but we will be doing some, uh, you can say, playing with some files. We will be adding some, uh, uh, you can say, some commands in Raspberry Pi operating system. So I will be doing that itself. Okay, so let us start. So let me close this. Okay, now let us open, first of all, insert the SD card. Now you can see that the SD card is being inserted and it has seen and you can see that there is nothing over here. So if I click on properties, you can find that there is, it's a free space. It is not uh, being used by any file, etc. So what we have to do, we have to use the first software that is called SD formatter. In order to download SD formatter, you can just go to this SD card.org slash download slash formatter and you can download over here. Okay. So what we will do, we just uh, double click this SD card formatter and click yes. So this is the first software which you are going to use in order to format that SD card. Okay, so what of all what you will do, click on option and click on this format size adjustment and click on on and click on OK and click format. So click OK, click OK again. So this software will format your SD card. So now this SD card is ready to take up the operating system. Okay, so now what we will do, we have to download that operating system. So for that, you have to just go to this raspberrypi.org slash download thread raspbian and you can download any of the raspbian operating system. As you know that in my previous video, I've already made you learn how to download raspbian jesse and how to install it on the SD card. So I'll be following the same procedure. So you can click over here for download version, for torrent version or download as the zip version. So I've already downloaded this. So so in order to uh, install the Raspbian Jesse ISO image in my SD card, I need another software that is called Win32 Disk Imager. So in order to download this software, you can go to this website that is called sourceforge.net slash project slash Win32 Disk Manager. Click on this download and you can download this. So what I will do, I just double click this Win32 Disk Imager. So now you have to browse the image file and you can and make it sure that the device which you are using that is the SD card you can find over here from the my computer it is H it is H drive so H drive should be for, uh, should be listed over here so click on this browse button and now go to uh, the browse of the ISO image so I will just go to my dumps I go to my Raspberry Pi operating system Raspberry Pi 2 miscellaneous operating systems and Raspbian Jesse so this is the image so first of all what we have to do is to write the image so click on write click on yes. So as you know that in my previous video, I've already shown you this procedure. So this procedure is again, you can say somewhat a lengthy procedure and it will take about 10 to 15 minutes to download on the SD card. So we will uh, just pause the video for some time and when it will be going to be 100%, we will be returning with the video and then we will be playing with some scripts. So now you can see that uh, almost we are done with the installation of the image file on the SD card. So now what we will do, we will have some change. I have written all these steps over here for you. So you can find all these steps downstairs on the video. So it has been written. So if you can just uh, browse this, you can find all these files are being written on the SD card, which means that the operating system has been installed. Now, in order to access remotely, we need to provide a Raspberry Pi with an IP address. So what we have to do, there is a file called cmdline.txt over here. If you double click this file, it is containing a text file, all the text file, all the parameters. So we have to add some parameters on this file. So what we have to do, we have to just open the word that is win word, Microsoft word, and just open this cmdline.txt file in win word. So let us open Word. 
blank document so let us file let us open click browse and now what I do I just go to boot and I just go to this that is called cmd line dot text now what you have to do after this root weight just give one space and type this IP is equal to whatever the IP address you want to give so I just a shortlisted one IP address that is 169.254.1.1 so that we can be able to remotely access our Raspberry Pi using this IP address okay so just save this file so click yes and just close so now what we have to do we just eject the SD card right click and eject boot so now you can see that we are now safe to remove the SD card. So what I will do, I just insert the SD card into my Raspberry Pi. So I've already demonstrated how to insert it. So I will not uh, go for any video demonstration in this video. So what we have to do, we just have to insert our Ethernet with the Raspberry Pi. So let us power on the Pi. So now I can see that the red and yellow light has been started blinking. So what I have to do, I just have to open one another software that is called Putty. So Putty is basically a small software. If you go to this uh, google.com, so till it boots, let me tell you how to, uh, you, if you go to google.com and if you type in a small, that is Putty, and you can go to this first website that is called putty.org, you can download over here. It's a very small uh, version, you don't have to download, it is just uh, uh, double click and start this. So let us start this and now you can find there is an opening interface and now we have to provide the IP address over here. So you have to provide the same IP address which I have allocated in that cmdline.txt file. So what I have to do, I just type in the IP address 169.254.1.1. So let us some, somewhat wait in order so that Raspberry and Jesse can be booted. So you can see now that it has given us some potential security breach warning. So no need to worry. So just click on yes. So now you can see that I have started with the login as. So I have not connected any keyboard, any mouse. I have just connected an Ethernet cable to my from my laptop to the Raspberry Pi. So you can have a look over here. So if I click on this, open network connection center, change adapter settings. So now you can see Ethernet and if I go with the details, you can find that there is an IP address which is written. So I have to manually change this IP address so I will make some changes over there. So let us go to this login as to Pi and give the password as Raspberry. So now you can see that I have logged in with Raspberry Pi. So what I have to see is to enable the Wi-Fi dongle interface etc. So what I will do, I just go to this file that is sudo space nano nano is the editor slash etc slash network slash interfaces so now you can see that it has uh, written auto lo that is loopback so or interface loopback inet loopback so it is okay so now we have to change this thing so over here we have to change one thing that is called iface etho inet manual so that we should be able to see our ip address so change it to dhcp and after that, we have to just go downstairs and now we have to do is to again change this Wi-Fi adapter settings because I will be connected manually my Wi-Fi dongle also. So I just change it to DHCP. And now if I go to this uh, hot plug, so WNO, WNO INET DHCP and this config. I just type one file name over here that is uh, the iface default inet dhcp so this is what you have to configure this network interface file so control x press y and press enter so the file has been written now we have to make some changes into the uh, wi-fi dongle into file so that we should be able to plug in our wi-fi dongle also so go to this file that is i have written this file so we type in sudo nano slash etc slash wpa underscore supplicant wpa underscore supplicant dot conf so now you can find that there are two lines written over here so we have to insert this all things over here so i will explain you all the file in just a matter of second let me copy paste in it so just copy and just right click so it will copy everything over there
So this is the another script which I have done. So network is equal to SSID, which means the SSID of my Wi-Fi router. So here is my Wi-Fi router. So you can find uh, this is Anand hyphen 4G network. So it's a Airtel 4G broadband. So it is a password which is machine at the rate one two three. So protocol can be that is WPA because I'm using that is WPA authentication. Key management is equal to WPA hyphen PS key. Pairwise is equal to key TKIP and author is equal to open. So now we have to do is to just save the file again. That is Control X, press Y. And press enter. So now we can see that the uh, Ethernet as well as the Wi-Fi adapter will be enabled. So what I will do, I just have to reboot the system. So sudo reboot. So you can see that the server connection has been closed, and now we have to just wait for some time so that the Raspberry Pi can boot. So till it boots, let me pause the video. So now the Raspberry Pi has uh, booted up. So let us uh, again double click putty.exe. So I give the Wi-Fi adapter address now because I have using the MAC filter. So I've already given uh, my this Raspberry Pi IP address, which is a static IP address into my Wi-Fi router. So let us type this IP address that is 1.103. So now you can see the potential warning. So click on yes. Now you can see that we have gone with Pi. So in the Wi-Fi, uh, there is somewhat slow. So make it sure that if you are using the wireless connectivity with your Raspberry Pi, it will be somewhat slow as compared to the Ethernet. So it is demanding the password. So again, the password is Raspberry. And now you can see that we are in the login address. So if I type in the command that is ifconfig, so you can see that it has been given the IP address, a static IP address that is 169.254.1.1 and 192.160.1.103 in which we are connected. So if you go to this connection adapter settings, so you can find the Ethernet. So again, you can find all the IP addresses. So the connection is being there. So I don't need this connection. You can just over there. So let us type this command that is called raspy. Hi so let us go with sudo raspy hyphen config. So now, first of all, what we have to do is to expand the file system so that we can be able to use the entire file system for Raspberry Pi. So select enter. So the root system has been resized, so click OK. So boot options, so what I have to do is to just have uh, the text-based console. So go to second option and press Enter. And if you want to go for some advanced option, you can go to this SSH and you can click on Enable. Click OK. And now we have to click Finish, so click on Yes. So now you can see that the server connection is again closed. So we have to wait again for the Raspberry Pi to boot. So we just pause the video again and then we will connect. Now the Raspberry Pi has booted up, so let us double click 192.168.1.103. So now everything is working perfectly. So let us uh, wait for the password blink. Give the password. So now you can see that the Raspberry Pi is being configured properly. So whatever the settings which we have done in the previous videos regarding with the use of keyboard, mouse and written display, in this video I have demonstrated how you can configure Raspberry Pi without even uh, connecting your keyboard, mouse and display. So everything can be there. So in the next videos I will be putting up some more YouTube videos regarding Raspberry Pi. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a shot. Thank you so much.